Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Kao Yang, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested in migrating to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell on the side so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. All right, uh, this weekend's video, uh, I would like to um, uh, talk about those uh, questions. Uh, is the, the Australian dream over or is it just a dreaming for the sector of migrations? Obviously, there has been a boom on uh, uh, interest in regards to migrate to Australia. Now, it's a, it's a geopolitical, uh, not, not, not an issue, but it's just uh, this period of history that we are living in a particular period of time uh, interestingly uh, Asia is not as stable as it used to be and uh, so was Europe you right uh, we still got the uh, Ukraine and Russia's war going on and also Middle East and how about the North America now the the biggest migration market used to be uh, now they are well the the economy is still good uh, but the general living standards and also in the post COVID era the inflation is crazily happening in North America that's including USA and Canada and also in Europe and that brings on the trend of people uh, switching their vision towards the southern hemisphere unfortunately in the southern hemisphere of this earth that we're living in there's either Africa uh, South America or Australasia. Now, Australasia, the biggest market will be definitely only one choice to go. That will be Australia. Now, in a very competitive market in a period of time, uh, what should you do? Obviously, the, the migration is still open and never shuts the door. Uh, but because the competition wise, it has actually caused a lot of people, uh, they have the intent, they are willing to have that Australian dream, but whether uh, they will actually got that visa there to fulfill their dream, uh, perhaps is somewhat beyond their control. Uh, so this video I would like to uh, bring on in regards to this uh, most query uh, visa, that's the skill, uh, my general skill migration. Uh, obviously uh, one will be, you know, the interested person will always be uh, you know, wanting to migrate independently rather than, uh, you know, rely on someone else, for example, an employer, for example, a state. Now, uh, the problem for Australia uh, is its system. Now, its system is designed so-called invitation-based. Now, I've done uh, numbers of different videos uh, in my channel throughout a period of time. You may want to have a look at those one, but this one I was just wanted to get some update for you because the competition has grown very intensively, and plus the government of Australia has dramatically dropped the quota require for the uh, the annual intakes. So let's have a look at the first uh, information that we have here. It's the migration planning uh, level uh, for 2024 and 25. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch that a little bit uh, towards the left of your uh, screen. So you can see that in the middle now, so migration planning, that's the web page provided by the Australian Government Department of Home Affairs, uh, showing you how many quarters that we currently have for the year, for the financial year of 2024 and 25. So this will be the major number now I know that a lot of people might already gone through it but uh, a lot of other youtubers may have different views now I, I would like to draw your attention that uh, it, within my channel uh, we have heavily well not heavily but uh, we recommend mostly to go for the biggest chunk of the quarter that's been allocated why do we do that because that means it's it's a better place uh, more chunks, more quarters means uh, it's less competitive. So as you can see on the 24-25 planning level, the biggest chunk is 44,000 and that's 
given to the employer sponsor and that is the reason we have been doing a lot of videos explaining how you can actually get employer sponsors so getting a job in Australia is actually very 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 important and that will then connect it to the futuristic well the soon to be the new point test system now also by the end of uh, I think will be a month ago I think or two uh, we will have that uh, the new skills and demand visa be introduced that will be replacing uh, the current employment sponsor visa well that will be the new employment sponsor visa it, it will it seems to be a more uh, promising uh system to be okay so uh 44,000, and uh, that's where to go uh and you can see what's happening in the skills independent had dropped almost half it was 30,375 for last year and now it's down to 16900 uh, that's half less 50% off now that means uh, if you want to rely on the student in, in, in independent visa there will be a long way to go now the reason that we are suspecting they put in that because the new point test system is will soon to be introduced and that's why they don't want too many people to continue to go on that route there now they have maintained the regional and the state territory normally and that's the uh, visa for 191 and for the 491 and also for 190 it's maintained there uh, but we can see the total number as we uh, I want to draw your attention here is that the state territory nominated was given 33,000 down uh, up right up here that's for the total number but if we scroll down uh, if I take you scroll down to the actual planning and given the allocations you can see for 2024 and 25 the actual total amount of 190 and 491 is uh, 16,500 plus 9,760 that now if you add that all together that doesn't go up to the numbers that we are actually given here now why is that i think the the main thing is the the they are spare about six thousand other uh, other quarters will be given to actually uh, those one who has been a delay uh, in the backlogs i think that's the reason that the government is actually allocating those kind of number but we can see uh through the actual realistic pr practical view from everyday um, business that we're doing here the actual nomination and the invitation is actually very very slow uh, again it's due to the national um, requirement to actually keep the net migration down uh, so that they can keep up with the problem with the inflation unemployment and also we all know the housing crisis uh, luckily that that they have uh, 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 put the the previous home affairs minister Claire O'Neill to the uh, the housing department now I don't know how Claire O'Neill will actually deal with that um, help, hopefully she could help the uh, the nation to build more houses perhaps anyway let's go back to the uh, statistic there now all the numbers are all about the same so uh, again we are looking into this area here and also talking about we got to know uh, when we talk about immigration and visa we have to we have to have that knowledge about the politics geopolitics because all that kind of stuff actually relates to the policy makers and also the executive part or executive arms of the government that's the actual government they are actually uh, you know issuing uh, and finalizing the visas because uh, that will actually relate to the national interest now the national interest nowadays for Australia we all have to know is that they need to keep the net migration down to in order to tackle the housing the inflation and the unemployment and the other one that I have read a couple of days ago in regards to the commodity trade because Australia has, used to be or still the mega size uh, mineral traders uh, especially in the sector of the iron ore it seems to be the iron ore markets and the trading platform uh, has demonstrated that there will be a shortfall major shortfall uh, for Australia due to the uh, uh, the economy slowing down in China so that will all cause all the issues 
in Australia. So we need to know all that now. How do you get prepared? Despite we're talking about uh, the harsh, uh, the toughness, the competitiveness of the uh, skill migration sector. Now, first thing is still the first thing. If you don't get the first thing done, you cannot do anything. So the first thing is skills assessment. Have you got your skill assessment done? Are you at the right occupation? I understand not all the occupation is actually within the list that's, that's required and every state has their own different lists. So you gotta have your skill assessment done. If you don't even have a skill assessment, it's actually very hard. And a lot of people ask, they got a skill assessment, they probably, or they haven't got their skill assessment, they're trying to understand they probably get 80 points or 70 points or 75 points. Now, those suspicions, uh, you know, intent or thoughts is good. You know, at least you get a dream there. Uh, but without having a skill assessment, how many points do you have? We don't know. Because you may think you have the skill, you may think you are suitable for a particular occupation, but after you've done a skill assessment, probably you don't even get a positive result. That means you get zero points. All right, so you need, really need to get your skill assessment done. Otherwise, it's all the blank and talk to the void. It doesn't make any sense at all. Now, the other thing I also wanted to mention because the in the still in, uh, independent uh, visa or the state nomination general skill migrations, it's all point test system. Now, we understand the current system, but we also need to focus what is going to happen and what is going to come next now i'm what i'm showing you you may want to find the actual uh, video that i've done in particular for the grattan institute's proposals uh that will have detailed indication but uh what i want to point to you is that uh, apart from skill assessment you also need to focus on getting your english level done and aiming at ielts 8 i understand it's very hard but that's that gets you more points than anything else that you can actually accrue with. Now, the other thing is also the uh, the income level. Now, seems to be, I, I believe the income level is, is going to be a major changer to the skill migration because uh, you can be young and you can be talented, you can get income very, very high, and then that will make a major changes there. So again, uh, if, you, if you wanted to uh, skill migrate to Australia, uh, you, you need to show your talent. Now, the, the weight in the market to show your talents is, uh, you, you can tell everybody you're very skillful, but are you really that good? Are you being paid that good and that matches to your talents. So your income is actually a very important part of the future uh, general skill migration. Anyway, there is still a dream for Australia. It's just getting harder for everybody to fulfill that dream. That's another key question there. You can have a dream, but can the dream be fulfilled? It's actually depend on how talented they're gonna be. Anyway, should you have more questions, query, more than welcome to leave comment right down below. And I'll see you next video. Goodbye.